guys. Today on the Home Winemaking Channel, I'm going to talk about invert sugar. What is it? How do I make it? And why should I care about it as a winemaker or maybe just as a person? You've probably heard about invert sugar in some wine recipes, maybe in some baking recipes. And the question is, why should I use invert sugar over just general table sugar? So we'll answer that today. Table sugar, which you get at your grocery store, is sucrose. So sucrose is fructose and glucose bonded together. So it's one molecule, one side fructose, one side glucose. Invert sugar is fru fructose and glucose non not bonded together. So they're still in the mixture together, but they're no longer bonded. They're unbonded, or you could say it's, you could call it um, sucrose that's decomposed into its original parts. So how do I make invert sugar? Um, to make invert sugar, you just you need to basically break that chemical bond. And there's some ways to do it. You could use a catalyst. That might be what they do in a chemistry situation. Um, but at home, the easiest way to break that bond is with heat and a little bit of acid to make things even easier to break it. So imagine you've got, um, I've got this green pair of bananas to demonstrate. So you've got your sucrose here, it's floating around. Throw a little heat, throw a little acid. So now you've got two individual things that are, they, they're a little bit different than the original thing. So exactly how much heat, how much acid, how long. Um, to, to make, to make um, invert sugar, you need you normally, and it's not exactly, it's not precise, it's pretty easy to split this bond. It's more a time temperature, acid. You can always go more, but don't go less. You make it a lot like you would just make, like you would just try to dissolve uh, sugar in water. You take um, four cups of sugar to two cups of water and you can scale that however you want to scale it. It doesn't have to be exactly precise. And you would add one quarter teaspoon of citric acid to the mix to really just help split that bond apart. If you don't have citric acid, you could use another kind of acid, tartaric acid, um, acid blend. You could even use lemon juice. It just really makes it a little bit easier to, to break that molecule apart. Um, you, so once you've got your mixture, you pour it into a pan, a nice clean pan and heat it up to a boil and when it comes to a boil don't don't just keep it at a raging um, boil because you don't want to caramelize it because that creates its own taste all together so heat it up to a boil and then simmer it for 20 minutes and at that point you should be pretty assured that uh, you've you've broken down that and not that molecule into um, sucrose or glucose and fructose now your, your mixture is officially invert sugar. Why is it called invert sugar? This is a little fun fact. Uh, it's called invert sugar because it actually bends the light backwards. So if you shine a light through um, sugar water, it might bend light this way. You shine a light through invert sugar, it'll bend it the opposite way. So that's why it's called what it is. And now the real question, why should I care about invert sugar? Um, and it's something I didn't necessarily care about until pretty recently, and, and it makes a lot of sense why you should care. So, wine is highly acidic, we know this. Um, pH is anywhere from, say, 3.0, 3.1 to 3.6 or 3.7. Um, so, over time, if you were to back sweeten your wine with table sugar, within, say, a month, it will actually, it will break that sucrose down into fructose and glucose, or lit literally invert the sugar on its own. Uh, and and if you if you do sweeten wine with just table sugar, you might notice that in a month from the time you've sweetened it, all of a sudden it tastes a little bit sweeter, maybe in a bad way. So maybe you think you've tuned it just perfect, and one month later, all of a sudden you're thinking, man, no, I think this is too sweet. I can't take any sugar back out. I already put it in. So the reason you use invert sugar is so that when I sweeten this wine to the desired level that I want it to be, I can be assured that if I come back one month from now, 
that wine tastes just like it did today. So I'm not surprised when I open a bottle and say, check out how good this wine is to my friends. And they're like, whoa, this tastes like candy. It's kind of weird. So that's why you, you would use invert sugar um, in winemaking. In just life, if maybe you're not a winemaker, you just want to know about why should I use it. Uh, in baking, people use invert sugar because it retains moisture better. So you want to get some nice cookies, I guess. You might use invert sugar instead of sugar. Get nice mo moist cookies. And it also uh, resists crystallization a lot better. So um, it's a lot less likely that when you mix it into your beverage or what are your, whatever you're making, you put it in the fridge for a couple of days, it's a lot less likely that it's going to reform crystals. So that's um, your, your cool fact of the day. Uh, I hope you liked it. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Home Winemaking channel, make sure you click the little subscribe button. If you want notifications, hit the little bell and uh, share this little tidbit of knowledge with your friends. Hopefully, hopefully you'll make some, some really nice high quality wines. Uh, thanks for watching.